Ready for a fresh start? Your happy place is right here on BNC's Taste of the Town with Marjorie Wordlaw. Awesome! Where life in the kitchen is fun. This meal is just rocking and rolling. Flavorful. Mmm, delicious. Oh, and Southern Charm. This is my handy dandy. Yep, she's got all that too. Boom, and that is that. And now, your host for Taste of the Town, here's Marjorie. Well, I am in the kitchen today. I have got a taste, you guys, for just comfort food. I thought I'm gonna make a nice, just an old-fashioned meatloaf. I've actually had several of you asking for meatloaf recipes, so that means you must be in the same mood that I am in. So we are gonna do, like I said, a good old-fashioned meatloaf we're going to have a nice little tangy topping on it that's going to be made with ketchup and brown sugar and a little apple cider vinegar. But to go along with it, how about some creamy mashed potatoes? We're going to do some roasted Brussels sprouts that we will have some garlic slivers on. And I'm going to just top it with, um, I guess, Parmesan cheese. Sounds good. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is tell you this is uh, about two and a quarter pounds of ground beef. And this is the 90% lean. So you wanna make sure that you get 85, 90% because you wanna be able to have some fat in it. And that's what this is gonna do, but it's not going to just shrivel up to nothing. So just kind of break it apart, get that going. I already have a pot on the stove that is gonna start boiling because I wanna put those potatoes in and I will show you how I kind of cut them up. But two eggs, I have um, half a cup of milk here. You can use milk, you can use half and half. I've got panko, the seasoned kind, one cup of panko bread crumbs. I always, this is my complete seasoning, so you know I have that. Garlic powder, uh, my oregano, I can't do hardly anything without my oregano. This is Italian seasoning. I find that it just makes the meatloaf have just an extra level of kind of flavor. Salt and pepper, you know, those are just basics. We're gonna always use that. And then for that topping, I've got brown sugar. Now, of course, I'm not gonna use all of this, but I'm just putting it in here. I have tomato ketchup. This is apple cider vinegar. If you want to use white vinegar, that would be absolutely fine as well. But for me, I kinda like just that little twang that comes with the apple cider vinegar. So, Sasson Goya, I'm always going to use a little bit of that. But these, as you know, are basically my favorite seasonings. But anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and crack two eggs. And we're gonna just kinda lightly beat those. Actually, a meatloaf is really pretty simple to make once you kind of get your basic ingredients. You really don't have to go and look buy the little packets of seasoning mix and use those because most of the time you've already got in your pantry or in your spice cabinet, you've got everything that they put in it as well. And um, so here we go. So what I wanna do is let me kind of just first get this a little mixed in here, get the egg going. So what I think I wanna do now is add my breadcrumbs. So I'm gonna get that going. And then I'm going to also get a pan started because I like to put in chopped up onions, diced green peppers, and a little bit of garlic. But I want them to cook just a little bit because I don't like to bite into my meatloaf and have pieces of the vegetables 
that aren't fully cooked and everything. So I kind of got this going at this moment. So this is good. I'm gonna put a little bit of the milk. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna see how this is gonna come together. So about a quarter of that cup or a little more. And it, that was a half a cup actually. I said a cup, it's a half a cup. This will begin to absorb into these breadcrumbs. So that'll be good. So, so since this water is now coming to a good rolling boil, this is for the potatoes, I'm just gonna put a little salt to season that water. I already went ahead and, you know, cut them up in quarters. And, and I know you know this is easy, but I like to choose for my mashing potatoes, the uh, yellow, or gold Yukon. They already have kind of a buttery flavor to them. So all I do is just cut them in half. This is five potatoes. And I thought for me and Gary, that's plenty. Plus we should have enough for leftovers. So just cut it in half and then I quarter that. When everything is kind of equal, it means that it's gonna cook the same and that's just gonna make everything better, the consistency is gonna be a lot better. So let's take these, tell you what I'm gonna do. There we go. So we get that going. This is one medium onion. So I just chopped and diced it up. So I'll get that going. And we want the onions to cook until they're just kind of translucent. And you know, when you're doing a bell pepper, you know, put the shiny, the skin side down when you cut it in half. It just makes it easier when you're cutting through. And I just kind of like make julienne strips. Then I just cut it into like nice little dice sized pieces. So just like this. Again, going for the consistency of size, you guys. And this way, when it cooks down and it's in the meatloaf, I'm gonna know that I have green pepper in here, but I'm not gonna be biting into big, huge chunks. So, there we go. That's good. So this is my oregano. This is a teaspoon, so I'm gonna go with about a teaspoon and a half. I'm gonna use a tablespoon of my complete seasoning. Okay, I know that's gonna be good. Garlic powder, oh, I gotta go a tablespoon. You know what, you cannot. Now, okay, I said my feelings. That's not quite a tablespoon, okay? So let's say that's about two, two good teaspoons. It feels like I needed to stop at that point, all right? The Italian seasoning, we're gonna do like about a half of a tablespoon. That's gonna be good. And of course, a little salt and a little pepper. And remember, this um, complete seasoning does have some salt in it, so you don't want too much. So that's about a half of a teaspoon. Pepper, about a teaspoon. That's good. And all I'm gonna do with this packet of Sasson Goya is just sprinkle a little, well, let me see what I'll do for you guys. Rather than just sprinkle it, I'm gonna use like a half a teaspoon. But I don't think I'm gonna use, so maybe a quarter. Here we go, see that? There you go, I think that's plenty. And let me just kinda get that, you know what? And I have three cloves of garlic that I took and minced up. Try to use fresh if you can. It just is, it's just so much better. But that's, that's just looking really, really good. And you know, 
when you are cooking vegetables like this that you're gonna add in, it's always a good idea to just take and add a little salt, a little pepper maybe, just to give a little seasoning to those vegetables. So let's just do that. Just a little salt, a little pepper. Oh, yes. This, I want you to see when I come out, really nice. When I tell you when I say translucent, look at that. Can you see how that looks? That just looks so good. So be careful because this is hot. And you're gonna now combine this into the meatloaf mixture. Let's get this mixed up really, really well. Okay. Mm. But what you can do is take a piece of parchment paper and then you can just kind of put it in. Sometimes it makes it a little bit easier when you are taking it out. Just lifting it up because often I have discovered when I'm cutting it in the pan, it starts to kind of break apart and I really hate that. So I kind of learned this a little bit, but that cooking spray usually helps keep it. There you go. So once you take this and you put it into the pan, you're gonna just kind of mold it all to the sides. There we go. So let's do this you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And then in a little bit, we'll make that topping because this is gonna bake. Overall, we're looking at about an hour, maybe an hour, I don't know, five or 10 minutes. But after it has been baking for about 35, 40 minutes, I'm gonna take it out. Then I'm going to put that wonderful tangy ketchup and brown sugar topping. So I am going to clean everything up. I'm gonna to go to break. I'm gonna get this in the oven. Remember it's at 375. And when I come back, we're gonna talk more about the Brussels sprouts, okay? Don't go away. Taste of the Town with Marjorie Wardlaw. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Taste of the Town. Once again, here's Marjorie. Okay guys, the meatloaf is smelling good. It's in the oven. I have checked and these potatoes are nice and tender. So I'm, I don't want them to sit and become waterlogged. So I'm gonna go ahead and I wanna just pour the water off so we can drain these. So this is a one pound bag of fresh Brussels sprouts. So I just, I wash them, you know, just really, just rinse them off good cold water. Just half the Brussels sprout. Now with the garlic, I have three garlic cloves here. Well, it really was three and a half. One was small. Make nice, thin little slices. I'm gonna do that. Just put all that leaves and all. So. We're gonna just drizzle some olive oil, and I'm gonna tell you that's probably gonna be about maybe a tablespoon and a half, close to two. Let me see how that is. I don't want them just drenched, but I certainly want them to have enough. And then just a good amount of salt, but remember you're gonna use the Parmesan, and Parmesan is a salty cheese. And the same thing with pepper. And then we're gonna just kinda toss these. I'm gonna take my pan, just lightly spray it with cooking oil, okay? Just lightly. That's it. So, just, just gonna put these Brussels sprouts on the pan, and once I kinda get them on here, we wanna lay them out kind of in a, make sure they're in a single layer. 
that way they all get to, like I said, roast together at about the same cooking time. Oh, the garlic smells good. These are just beautiful. So what I wanna go ahead and do now, I need to put these Brussels sprouts in so that they can start. And they are gonna take, again, about, about 35 minutes or so. And that's gonna work well with the way that the meatloaf is cooking now. And so what I am going to do is I'm gonna start working on that topping for the meatloaf. So for the topping to go on this meatloaf, um, I'm gonna use a cup of ketchup. You know what, a little trick that I, I use and it helps to get the ketchup all out. You know, I just kind of spray like my measuring cup just a little bit. I want a cup of ketchup, okay? So a cup of ketchup, see there? Look at this, it should all. So we're gonna do about two and a half tablespoons of dark brown sugar. If you don't have dark brown, use your light brown, but just two and a half to start. And then I want you to taste it. Taste, taste, taste. Because your taste buds will let you know. And let's see, a half. So that would be about like one and a half teaspoon. You know what, it's just, just play with it, okay? Also, I like to use garlic powder. So I'm gonna do about half a teaspoon of the garlic powder. Well, maybe I'll start with about a fourth. Same thing, I'm gonna use just a little bit, maybe a fourth, well, maybe a half a teaspoon. I'll go back and add more. I'm gonna stick with like a fourth. The apple cider vinegar, you're gonna do, let's start off with about a teaspoon and a half. And then I'll know when I taste it if I wanna increase it, but. So let's see what this is like. Mm. It needs more brown sugar. So let's go with a little more brown sugar. So at that point, that was probably about four tablespoons, okay? But hey. Guys, so the Brussels sprouts, they look great. So just sprinkle Parmesan. So that's a wonderful topping. It's gonna just seep all down the sides. Mm. That is going to be delicious. For our potatoes, like you know, they're already done. I just have one cup of half and half. I'm probably only going to use about half of this cup, I think. And then I have a stick of butter. But again, I'm gonna play with the butter and I'm gonna do about maybe three quarters of this stick. We're gonna just pour a little bit in. Because remember, this is all very hot. So, and then I'm gonna just take my mixer, my hand mixer, and starting off on a lower speed, begin to just kind of mix these all together. Just another, maybe a tablespoon of butter. You guys, the mashed potatoes are ready. Those Brussels sprouts are really just about ready. When I come back, that meatloaf should be out and I'm gonna get my dinner plate together and we'll have a taste. Don't go away. Taste of the Town with Marjorie Wardlaw. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Taste of the Town. Once again, here's Marjorie. Tell me this looks like something you'd love to sit down and eat. Oh my goodness, the mashed potatoes, the, oh, the meatloaf looks wonderful. I don't know where to start though. I'm gonna go with Brussels sprouts, okay? So let's get the Brussels sprouts. 
Mmm. They've got that little crispiness, the crunch with the little garlic. Oh, and the Parmesan is wonderful. These mashed potatoes, you can see, I had some chives, so I just chopped up just to garnish them. Mmm, mmm. Oh, buttery, just enough salt that brings out the flavor, the creaminess. Oh, you guys, and now for that meatloaf, and it looks so delicious. I wanna get some of this with the topping on it. Oh, that little extra brown sugar I put, that did it. This is so delicious, you guys. You know I wanna do the Marjorie dance. <laughs> this is a wonderful meal. Listen, go in your kitchens, ask me for the recipe so I can send it to you. And then you do the same thing because you and your family and your friends are going to love this meal. You know I love you guys. I will see you. Take care of yourselves. Be safe. Be well. Taste of the Town with Marjorie Wordlaw. Saturday and Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. on BNC and BNC Go.